there's never just a plan A. There's often a plan B and a plan C as well. But sometimes it pays to not have a plan. This is the story of two founders who, without planning to, have changed the game for robotic technology here in India and across the world. This is the story of Grey Orange, a futuristic venture which is making its mark worldwide in the field of warehouse automation. How? Well, there are robots involved. Robot butlers, to be exact. Get ready to marvel. The word robot for most conjures up images of characters from Star Wars, the humanoid figures, going about controlling things remotely. There's fantasy, science and a whole lot of tech. Then there's the age-old perception associated with them. Can robots ever lead to the demise of the human race and outmuscle us and take over the world? Today, these perceptions are being put to rest by various modern hardware ventures. And leading the Indian robotics game is a successful venture called Grey Orange. And at the helm of this venture is a dynamic duo. Meet Akash Gupta, co-founder and chief technology officer at Grey Orange. And this is Samay Kohli, co-founder and CEO of Grey Orange. His focus is on global expansion of Grey Orange and in making it an obvious choice for automation. With an immense passion for robotics, the pair have been featured as one of India's 30 under 30 success stories last year. This is one former startup which has scaled up into a success story. But what does Grey Orange do? And what are these robots all about? So what robots are traditionally always supposed to be, they're supposed to help people do their job better. And what Grey Orange essentially does is makes robots for warehouse workers to do their job better. Anything that you buy from a store is usually going to run through some series of warehouses, right? And that will be where uh, Grey Orange would be using its robots. All our robots are actually controlled by our software, which is artificial intelligence enabled. What that does is the robots keep learning and keep getting better. So as everything keeps changing around around them, they actually keep evolving and learning. So what a robot does bad today, they actually do better tomorrow. Grey Orange was founded in 2011 and what started off as a team of two has now grown into a 550 member plus organization with offices around India, Singapore and Hong Kong. Grey Orange targets a deeply unorganized industry, warehousing. And the venture is building an army of robots to take over warehouses and distribution centers with these robots, aptly named the butler and the sorter. But the big question remains, that with so much focus on scaling up, is Grey Orange managing to rake in the moolah? Grey Orange is actually broken even and we plan to sustain that. The reason is that we continue to take our revenues and reinvest it into R&D because we really want to keep pushing the envelope of innovation, right? And that's a really long-term journey that we are on and hence we'll continue to do more, much more R&D as we keep growing. Wow, this is amazing. I'm here to check out the Grey Orange Sorter, which I guess helps these huge companies like Flipkart streamline their warehouse operations. Uh, Amrita here is going to show me how it all happens. One of Grey Orange's flagship products is the Sorter. And as the name suggests, it is a robotic sorting system for order consolidation and parcel routing. While the second product, the Butler, is an automated storage and goods-to-person order picking system. With e-commerce giants like Flipkart and Jabong as the clients, we want to know. What kind of impact has Grey Orange made globally? What is the future of robotic technology in India? Warehouse automation. What exactly is that and what impact have you made globally? We have these uh, you know, modular storage units and we have these robots and these robots go fetch these modular storage units and get to you. Right? And when that modular storage comes to a you know, pick put station, you pick the items that have been ordered, pack them and ship. So it really enables, you know, four-hour deliveries, two-day deliveries, uh, which which are you know now being pretty common, right? So that's one product. Second product, sortation system. What it does is you can you know use this sortation system to do few things. First, sort them location-wise or pin code-wise or city-wise, or um, you know measure the volumetric, measure the weight of the packet, capture an image of the packet. So so all these. Uh, things are being done through sortation systems. So it's kind of a end-to-end -end solution for, uh, you know, 
picking the items, packing them, and then sorting them to send to the customers. Like you said, this all sort of comprises that invisible labor that appears before we finally receive a product. Do you think that we're going to start seeing these robotics around us maybe in our day to day as well? I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. Uh, it's, it's still, it's going to take some time for sure. Uh, of course, we have you know products like Roombas who are cleaning our houses. Not that you know thing. It, it's still not that you know in India it, people are not using it. But I'm pretty sure if we talk about next five to ten years, you're gonna have a lot more uh, robotic products coming in, uh, assisting in your day-to-day -day life. So then, what's next for Grey Orange? I think uh, the first and foremost thing is to build a very very strong product engine internally, so that you know any problem we pick up we can build a very very strong international product so I think that's one thing and of course um, you know the innovation in our current products and uh, you know coming up with newer products that are gonna dominate the complete end-to-end -end warehouse automation is definitely up for next 18 months. Probably my favorite part of my visit to Grey Orange today was seeing the robots in action, particularly when they were working in tandem. There was a harmony that you could tell requires a lot of thought and precision. The other thing that I find very heartening is that these major Indian companies now have systems in place to really boost efficiency and perhaps also reduce worker turnover. At that point, we can reach efficiency levels that we also see in Japan and Germany. Now that's my take on Grey Orange. Let's hear what the mentors have to say about it. Meet Abhinav Mathur, the former Chief of Strategy and Technology at Spice Global and current Chairman of Founders Catalyst. He's known to be outspoken and doesn't mince his words when it comes to passing his verdict on new startups. Meet Neha Singh, co-founder of Traction, a startup intelligence and market research platform. An alumnus of IIT Bombay and Stanford School of Business, Neha's vast knowledge on startups has helped her connect several venture capitalists to upcoming startups. Butler and the Sorter is again something very interesting and you know it's nice to see that they are making uh, you know significant improvements on the technology itself. Uh, if they continue to focus on the technology inside of the company, the opportunity is of automation is huge. I think they are in the right space at the right time, which is probably the most important thing for a startup. Grey Orange has shown a very good traction. They already are working with a lot of large online retailers. And uh, you know, going forward, I think uh, uh, they might have also scope of expanding uh, in other countries uh, because it's sort of a pure tech play in that sense. Angel investing is crucial to the startup ecosystem. Funding and backing a passionate founder is integral to promoting growth and an often nascent space in Indian business, the startup. But then a dilemma arises. In this race to bring deals to the table, are angel investors backing the wrong ideas? In fact, is angel investing in India a bubble that's poised to pop? Let's find out in the state of the startup. Crystal ball gazing into the realm of investing for startups and angel investors. Well, the good news is that angel investing seems to have become a self-contained growth industry in India. But here's a question. Are they backing mediocre ideas in a bid to bring more deals to the table? There's a lot of things that may, on the face of it, seem like bad ideas. Uh, that later become awesome ideas and awesome businesses. So I think we should you know, hold judgment, not try and broad brush everything. But I think there is something to be said about just trying to clone other people's ideas. I think you need to be different in some way. You need to execute superbly and, uh, and different in a differentiated manner. Or you need to have something else that gives you that spark, that, that additional spark that allows you to uh, out, you know, outdo the competition. While statistics and a growing database of funded startups show that angel investing may be doing India some good by promoting entrepreneurship. But in the race to back more startups, are investor groups cutting back when it comes to quality? Are these groups starting to cut corners in doing due diligence in deciding which startups to fund? I think investing uh, in any part of the world actually goes through the different phases. Uh, there might have been a lot more investment uh, in the last couple of years and you would definitely see some slowdown uh, over the next year or two. But I don't think it's a, it's a bubble that's really bursting, it's just uh, going through its normal uh, cycle. So is this angel investing bubble going to burst? Will we see a slump in money flowing into the startup economy? 
so for me i think the correction will happen probably in the next year when a lot of people who would make angel investments may not be able to find right sort of deal crack they may not find exits easy to come and it would stop so angel and fund funding i feel would become less in the times to come